evening we have uh, two public hearings, and we will have our normal agenda followed by four reports, and then last sermon that means comments from the public on anything there. So, uh, if I may, uh, we'll start with the public hearing for Keen Car Care East LLC. Is the applicant here? Okay. Thank you. Uh, I can ask uh, the clerk to read the notice of public hearing. Thank you, Megan. Legal notice of public hearing, Incorporated Village of Floral Park, New York. Notice is hereby given that the Board of Trustees of the Incorporated Village of Floral Park, New York will hold a public hearing at Village Hall, 1 Coral Boulevard, Floral Park, New York, on May 4, 2021, at 8 p.m. in relation to the following applications. The application of Team Car Care East LLC in a business as with Jiffy Blue, number 167, for a special use permit revision, section 99-46, to allow for a change to the approval granted in 1984 for the alteration and extension of an existing non-performing repair garage at 50 Jericho Turnpike, located in the B2 business district. This application is a special use extension as set forth by Article 7, section 99-46 of the Foreign Park General Ordinance and that no legal conforming use or structure may be enlarged or extended unless the use therein is changed to a conforming use or where a special permit for such enlargement or extension of the use and or structure shall have been granted by the Board of Trustees after a public hearing. The structure for which said special permit is applied is situated on the southwest corner of the intersection of Jericho Turnpike and Tula Avenue known as 50 Jericho Turnpike, Section 32, Block 47, Block 56, on the Nassau County Tax Map. A copy of the application is on file in the Office of the Village Clerk, 1 Coral Boulevard, Coral Park, New York, and may be examined by any persons interested therein during business hours, Monday through Friday inclusive, except legal holidays from 8.30 to 4.30 p.m. Now take notice that all parties and interested citizens will be given the opportunity to be heard at the aforesaid time and place by order of the Board of Trustees Incorporated Village of Laurel Park, New York, Susan Walsh, Village Clerk, and it was dated April 23rd, 2021. And then the legal notice has been published in the official paper of the Incorporated Village of Laurel Park, New York, as posted according to law, and was sent to the National County Planning Commission and pursuant to Section 239-LN of the General Municipal determined to defer the, to the village to take action as deemed appropriate and said to as, as deemed appropriate. Thank you. Let's like place on the record the applicant has previously filed an affidavit of service indicating that all neighbors within a 200 foot radius of the building have been served with notice. Also like to announce that the board has previously adopted the resolution determining that the application did not have a significant effect and significant impact on the environment as defined by State Environmental Quality Review, otherwise known as CEQA. Uh, with that, I'd like to invite the applicant to come up. If you could state your name and uh, address for the uh, My name is Paul Cherry Brandon. Uh, my address is 182 Westford Terrace. Services that he's proposing to do with the 
Uh, what are the hours going to be? So currently we're doing uh, 8 to 6, Monday to Saturday, and then uh, 10 to 5 on Sunday. And do you expect more or less for the same amount of the business exchange? Uh, I, uh, we should get more, more business. And with more business, are you expecting costs to have to either queue up to obtain services or park somewhere and leave? No, we, all, all our services will be done during business hours, like previously, as before. I guess what I'm asking is that you, know, you have 10 cars coming in at once, or they're scheduled appointments, so the cars aren't coming Excuse me. So if, if you have, are you going to have a line of cars waiting for services, basically? Uh, so we roll this out in about 18 different locations. We do not have any lines waiting for those type of services currently in any other location. If there was a line, how would you deal with it, especially since you're at a busy corner? Um, if there was a line of services, it could extend into the street. How would you deal with that? So we will try to park the vehicles in the parking lot or set up appointments because uh, it, we can't do, if we forget overwhelmed services, we won't be able to perform on the same day. So we recommend to do appointment service. Okay. Um, one of the conditions in the, I think it was the 1984 um, grant that we gave, that was here at the time, was that there would be no parking overnight. Are you going to continue with that or are you expecting to have cars parked overnight? Uh, no, we do not expect to have no vehicle to park overnight. Okay, so you'd be okay with the condition of the uh, application to have no car parked overnight? Yes, sir. Uh, can I turn it on? Yeah, please. Can you take it to the next Is that right? Thank you. Did you miss anything? Or? No, no, no. no. Okay, thank you. No I'll just turn it over to our board for some questions and I'll start with that deputy mayor. Thank you. Thank you for coming in to speak with us. We appreciate it. Um, questions. I have heard that the structure itself is going to stay the same. Uh, the footprint of your building will be the same. Correct. Um, are you doing any structural changes on the inside then? To uh, the only renovations, not uh, any structural changes to the floor or the walls or anything like that. Just maybe painting and putting mm -hmm. a roof or siding or gutters or anything like that nature, but just to make it look more attractive. Do you expect that, whether in phase one or phase two, um, you're obviously increasing your services. Will there be an increase in the amount of noise that neighbors or those around, businesses around might hear or be bothered by? So currently, the only services that we will offer that, would, that could put any noise is a break, changing breaks, but not anything loud or anything. Do you do much work outside, or is it pretty much within the building? It's inside the building. We don't do the work outside. Okay. Um, how about um, increases in other traffic, uh, like trucks making deliveries? Um, do you expect that to happen more frequently? Not at all. Uh, we, we just get the parts from the advanced auto parts that's next door, and we will source from there. Then only we don't get uh, any, okay. you know, we don't house any of the, the items. Big trucks come. No. Um, how many employees do you expect to be there throughout the work day? Uh, throughout the typical work day is about six employees. And just during this transitional time as you add the services, will you yourself or another manager be on site supervising the work? So periodically I do visit that location. I'm the district manager at nine in Nassau County. Uh, it's my business to, to visit it at least once a week. Okay. And that will continue? Correct. Thank you. Okay. So now I'm getting a little confused, right? So the bottom of your list, I know space two, we're going to talk about both bases at the same time. You're going to do New York State inspections, correct? Oh, we currently still do. Okay. And do you make the repairs there? No, so if a vehicle fails for inspection for something we do not perform, we recommend them to go to a mechanical mechanic shop and give them 10 days to come back with it repaired and then still pass the inspection. But most of the items that you're looking at here would encompass any kind of repair from a vehicle inspection standpoint. Cur currently, no, but with the, the fix.
phase one, phase two ones with uh, brakes and service, uh, brakes and rotors. Well, and then I'm going to ask you, so you're doing a repair and you don't have a car. The person goes in at 4 o'clock and the advance doesn't have a car. Where is that vehicle going to go? So uh, in a current, in a situation like that now, like say if we have a vehicle we're servicing and it breaks down and we have no way of um, getting out the building, we'll leave it inside the building. And you have approximately what, if I'm not mistaken, room for six vehicles to be parked over the days that they're in, in, in existence Correct. And you don't expect additional noise when you talk about shop replacements and structure replacements? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure if we was going to do all the shots. I'm not sure if that's that one there. But currently, it no, it's on. Oh, okay. I mean, I take on, I've done a little work on cars before, and sometimes those shots can be kind of tough when you get those air hammers on those to, to air wrenches to take off of the bolts. <coughs> No, you, you are correct about that. But uh, we have one multi-care multi location in Woodside, and we currently do not have two shots, that's why. I'm just, I'm just looking at your list here. I mean, I don't, I don't want to be the one to go through your list and decide what you can do and what you can't do. This is what you're, you're asking for. And what you're asking for is more encompassing. And if we were to approve the application, this is the list that's in the application.
14 years that I've been with Jiffy we have never had a situation where we have to house six, more than six vehicles. And currently with the location that's in Woodside, it's only one or two vehicles at max that has to stay over from my experience and they've been, they have been doing that for two years now. Uh, you know, one of our main concerns is the use of noise that's going to be generated to our neighbors in the area. So just be cautious of the guys to that and try to be aware of that so that, you know, we can limit the amount of noise that's our neighbors in the subject. Yes, I understand that. Uh, I remember um, when I first started in 2007, we were louder um, and with the big calls and stuff like that, but it is a different time now, so everything has changed with that, so we're not as loud as I remember previously. Trustee Stewart. Hi. Hello. Hello. Um, based on what um, Trustee Chair was saying, is there a way to get out of the line other than to go through the bank phase? For example, if I pull up and I want to do the full service thing, but you already, you're booked, so you want me to come back on Tuesday. If I'm on the line and someone's in front of me and someone's behind me, how do I, how do I then exit? So, um, floor park is a unique, floor park, the uh, Jeffy Loop store is a unique setup. So um, we have arrows pointed for vehicles to come towards the right. That's where they should enter. If they have to exit, they should exit towards the left where the parking is at. So you can, I can exit the line going around the building? Correct. Okay. I, I have, I, okay, thanks. So I think there are 41 services on this list. So how many of them do you currently perform? I, I'm, not, I'm not sure what's on that list to tell you. Oh. Okay. So the, the, the services we currently do is automatic transmission fluid service, serpentine belt replacement, radio fluid exchange, air conditioner recharge, fuel filter replacement, gearbox fluid exchange, fuel system cleaning, cabin air filter replacement, engine flush, tire rotation, engine air filter replacement, light bulb installations, radiant cap replacement, wiper blade replacement, windshield, repellent treatment, headlight restoration service, New York State inspection. Any additional, 
any deliveries to, to the shop? Um, if a buyer a delivery from advance, they usually use a small car or or they can walk it over from advance. So all of your equipment comes from advance? Correct. Okay.
proposal to utilize existing rental of Saturday for expanded residential use. Ms. Wilson, would you please read the notice of public hearing? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Legal notice of public hearing incorporated in the Board of New York. Notice is here by given that the Board of Trustees of the Incorporated Village of Coral Park, New York, will hold a public hearing at Village Hall 1405, Coral Park, New York, and on Tuesday, May 4th, 2021, at 8 p.m., in relation to the following application. It's the application of the Harrison 86 South Tyson LLC slash Vincent DeRico, property owner of 86 South Tyson Avenue, Coral Park, New York, is made in accordance with Article 3. Section 99-10B1 of the Zoning Ordinance of the Incorporated Village of Coral Park, New York, which requires that when a building is used for a restaurant, diner, tavern, bar, and grill, drive-in restaurant, and a B1 district, the use may only be authorized as a special use after a public hearing. The applicant proposes to utilize the existing outdoor patio for expanded restaurant use. The structure for which said special permit is applied is situated on the northwest corner of South Tyson Avenue and Tyson Avenue Extension and known as Section 32, Block 55, and Lot 16 on the Nassau County Plan and Tax Map. A copy of the application is on file in the Office of the Village Clerk, 14 Boulevard, Coral Park, New York, and may be examined by any persons interested therein during business hours Monday through Friday inclusive, except legal holidays from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Now take notice that all parties and interested citizens will be given the opportunity to be heard at the aforesaid time and place. By word of the Board of Trustees and Corporate Village of Coral Park, New York, Susan E. Walsh, Village Clerk, the legal notice was dated April 23, 2021, and it was published in the official paper of the Incorporated Village of Coral Park, New York, and posted according to law, and sent to the Nassau County Planning Commission that pursuant to Section 239-LM of the General Municipal Law, determined to defer to the village to take action as deemed appropriate. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. I'd like to place on the record that the applicant had previously filed an affidavit of service indicating that all neighbors within a 200-foot radius of the dwelling had been served with the notice. Additionally, I'd like to announce that the board has previously adopted a resolution determining the application does not have a significant impact on the environment as defined by the state environmental quality review or the CEQA. Um, we've been talking. It's been a while. Mayor. Um, so I'd like to, when you get a minute, uh, present the application, what the changes are, what is being asked for, and while doing so, if you can discuss how we got to this point, including any permits that were needed and used to uh, make the, the appropriate changes that are on the diagnosis. I think you should have uh, Mr. Ricciaro go his appearance for the record. Thank you. Thank you. Do you swear from the testimony about the three people who chose the notices? Yes. Name and address. Mario Ricciaro, he's a victory, E-R-G-A-R-A, 200, Jericho Turnpike, Paul. Good evening. Uh, before I begin, Vincent DeRico, the uh, part owner, is here to answer any questions I can. The Harrison Restaurant has transformed the former Colonies Restaurant into a fine dining experience, attracting a mature adult customer base, and has done so since its inception several years ago. The application before you tonight is requesting permission to extend that experience to the outdoors. If you refer to the drawing provided, you will see the proposed outdoor seating is situated in the northeast corner of the lot, adjacent to the existing party room, and bounded by either building walls or a fence providing privacy. You will also note a reference to a proposed service board in a separate structure adjacent to South Tyson Avenue. This structure originated as a fully enclosed refrigerated trash room and was built under the middle to do so. As well as the patio area uh, in anticipation of an outdoor seating area. Uh, it was necessary to install dry wells below the patio to take the additional storm drainage 
from what would be impervious surface that was originally just brown. So it was necessary to do these things up front, and it was done so. Um, due to the anticipation that customers would want to access alcohol surface, it was it was proposed to create an additional enclosure adjacent and attached to the original structure. Thought process was to shift the trash to the newly created space and thus provide that service bar. Since the pandemic, however, it has become clear that customers actually prefer the outdoor experience and we are now requesting permission to service customers at the bar by providing tenant seats. The use of the outdoor seating bar area will be either via private parties or a la carte. A la carte customers will need to enter the restaurants and have a hostess escort them to the outdoor area. There will be no direct access the outdoor area from the street. The hours of the outdoor area will follow the operating hours of the restaurant, 11 a.m. to 1 a.m., Sunday to Thursday, and 11 a.m. to 2 a.m., Fridays and Saturdays. I will note, however, it has been the Harrison experience that they normally are closed by midnight. Once again, Rockford Harrison would like to stress the customer base caters to a mature adult seeking a fine dining experience. To, to date, there have been no noise complaints or police calls to the restaurant. Be happy to answer any questions I can. Thank you. So, I'm, I'm sorry, you, you're requesting to add 10 seats to the bar? 10 seats at, at the bar. Does that mean that the 48 seats is going to be reduced? Yes, so the, the 48 seats would be, would be maintained, and so in essence, 10 of the bar, 38 of the seven days. Absolutely, max 48 for the right. Um Will the seats always be there? And the concern is, will there be ever a time where the seats will be removed and people will be standing around having beverages as opposed to sitting in the, whether it be on Friday night or for an event? That's an operating question I'll ask Mr. Three. Thank you. 
capability. That's not in plan, but I guess I would just state it to be capability to do so. Whereas not been something that we have done, but it's something that we have been working on. So I think that is a very good point. Thank you. 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 Up to a three piece then, what time would that end up? Would it still be the same time as? So I would say, we don't, even from the beginning, we've never, even inside, um, been closed anywhere near the times that we were allowed to operate. Uh, usually, everything is done by midnight, and even so, uh, with outside, it would be done earlier than inside. Anyway, yeah, I'm just going to start with live music going to yeah. potentially 2 o'clock in the morning. No, no, there's, no, you, no, there's no intention to do that. And can you say for the record what time you would be requesting if we were to entertain having an outside music? Okay. What time? I, 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 there would be no later than 11 p.m. Okay. Right. Um, I have a couple more, but I will turn it over to Dr. Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Um, Thank you for providing such a wonderful restaurant to our community. Um, it is a good place to go. A lot of us stop here frequently um, and go, go by frequently. It, it seems that there has been um, construction going on on the north side of the building where you we're know, listening to the details about what the envisions are there. Um, what kind of construction has gone on there recently? So the only construction, the construction that has that on there is getting ready for uh, a getting ready for footing for the um, the both garbage area uh, and also for the fence and also just the uh, opening because the the building the infrastructure there are just the openings that would be necessary to facilitate the movement. Um, you had talked about. I guess closing off that area so that people would have to go into your restaurant and then be received and put outside. What's that enclosure going to look like? It's not right now, it looks open. So, what it's going to look like is exactly the way it looks on the inside, where the, fence, the wooden fence that's already existing will be um, extended out the additional eight feet, and then it will be returned with two returns with an emergency exit door. Uh, on our property line, and when it extends 36 inches out, it will still be on our property line. And, but it will maintain the same integrity of the design that's already there. And the only difference is there will be an emergency door to get out. Yeah. Would you expect a flow of customers in and out of the restaurant into the outside area and vice versa? Um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to understand the question. Well, since you have a very active bar, would you expect a flow of customers leaving? indoor bar to outside and going from outside to the inside? I don't believe so because I think the way people usually come in and just to return stuff the people usually come in is once they establish what they want to do, they're set with what they're going to do. So it's not the type of operation we run, we run the planning base and so forth. It's not, um, it's not a bar where it's going to be the whole idea is for it to be a nice uh, environment, casual environment that you relax and enjoy yourself at the spot where you're enjoying yourself. So it's not a situation where we're looking to build bars, dual bars, where we're just not having a bar scene. We're not looking for a bar scene in that sense. So even now, when people sit outside, people are seated. Nobody's standing. It's not that kind of environment, and we don't plan on being that kind of environment. We're not interested. Thank you. I may have some more questions. Thanks. Thank you. Trustee Chairman. So I, I'm just a little confused. When I saw the application, I saw the application for proposed outdoor seating for 48 people, which was dated March 10th. On well, the plans that were submitted, which were received by us on March 10th, the proposed service bar was there. Now the service bar is being changed to actually being a sit down bar. So why doesn't any of this? Close to us or amenities. Because I think it, it looks not purposely. No, I don't. So, for instance, if I'm, so 
just like the, the professional thing. So originally, that was supposed to be looked at it as a garbage spot. And then all of a sudden, I was like, okay, why do this as a garbage spot if we can build this as a service bar, especially with my thought process, but even more so for parties when people are booking events, the idea of them knowing that they have um, space outside, uh, outside, especially during pandemic, to access was something that would be attractive, and that's the way it started. So then, there's been a three month gap between, almost three month gap between the hearing for the zoning board and this. My wheels start turning. So that's the honest answer. So as my wheels start turning, I'm saying, okay, what about the experience? My name is being even nicer. We add a few seats out here, people can actually sit outside. And that's how that happened. I mean, but not to quibble, yep. but the drawings that we received were dated prior to March 10th. Mm -hmm. And the application states of March 10th. Without any mention of this. Okay, I'm not. I'm, I'm just. Uh, yes, I'm not. I'll check, I'll check with Mario to go over it. So, Nothing was done intentional in my sense. No, I get it. Yeah. Because it keeps right. being changed, and I think that's one of the questions. Yes, I afford it. Yeah. And I just think whether the answer or not, the truth is, things are always evolving in my hands as far as what I want to do. So you're successful. Yeah. 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 I can. Not just an argument. No, no, I can. That is exactly what happened over time. The thought process changes. Month to month, sometimes when you get an idea in my head, just to see the trustee yeah. change. I, I get numerous phone calls, as you can imagine. And my thought process is listen, we're going to go in tonight and they yes. have ways. You know, and, and whatever the application said, I do realize that it's safe service, and that's why I brought your attention. And I don't remember the exact sequence of events, but I can tell you that it's been fluid. So I didn't see a need to try to go back and change applications back and forth when we could scope it out now. And quite frankly, this idea of this seats at the bar was only within the last week as far as I knew. So it was really good time to reapply. Well, there was always time. Well, it, in, my, in my thought process, there was no time to do that. And I would ask, you know, as Marcus, if, if there was time to Amend it to at least give us notes. Anyway, let's go away from it. Let's go away from it. How supplies and stuff how we get to this new proposed sit down bar? I'm sorry. How, how are they going to get there? How is supplies getting in there? So, first of all, in the outdoor area, I just want to do all disposable uh, because just from an operational and execution point of view. Honestly, the way the restaurant is the last thing I want to do is be worried about, just like you're saying, bringing things there and having to bring them back and so forth and having to service that well. So my own concept for that area is disposable because I feel that once you're sitting outside, you know that you're in a casual setting and you're in a relaxed setting. So I don't think if you want formality, you can easily go in a dining room, you can go in an outdoor dining room, or you can go in the indoor bar. So it's going to be disposable. And that's the way do you plan to stop from that emergency exit door on Tyson to come in that way to serve the supply and the service bar? Or, I'm sorry, sit down bar. Do I? I, I need to more. No, no, we don't. We won't need to. So, in other words, the bar itself will be stopped, um, and then anything that we need, we're all, you know, for the most part, it should be stopped for the night period. If there's anything that's needed, we will go traditionally the way a restaurant operates. Whether the bus, a bus or something going to the bar, doing the bar to the leads, and going inside and getting it, and bring it back out. And food will be served by that single opening door to the outdoor area or through the party room with the, what is it, accordion type doors? Yeah. Yeah. So we have another the accordion type doors, and we also have the, the double swinging door from the bar to the outside. Also. Yes, that I see. Yes. So that's, so how will you be serving food into the Outdoor scene here. So we we'll go through the double swing door, which we actually leave open all summer, but it also is meant to go back and forth, just like an operational door. Or we can, just as you had mentioned, yes, with the French doors open, we can also go through the inside room and also back and forth through that. It's possible. Could you tell me what is the seating capacity of the party room? So the whole, the restaurant itself is 240, and then right now the 
Priority number three is 60. 60. Do you envision having affairs that would encompass both the party room and the outdoor seating area at one time? Yes and no. The reason I say yes and no is to be honest with you, it's not actually financially, um, there's no incentive for us to give up both spaces. It's more, we're, we're not booking that way because A, we can't um, weather, we can't, we can't book somebody, we can't really give somebody outside space and all of a sudden it's going to happen for and if we book the other room, then we're going to go. So we don't book outside private, uh, only with the idea of knowing that you book inside, and if it's nice out, then you can go outside. We don't book uh, the whole space, and it's really not. From a financial point of view, we're not booking the rooms that way because I'd almost rather have a space for regular dining at times than to have uh, both spaces occupied. I'd rather have regular dining outside and then people in the party room itself versus having the whole thing. Uh, from a financial point of view, it's better for us to keep it separate. Not that it will never happen uh, based on request, and we feel it's the financial incentive is there for us to do it. But for the most part, it's more beneficial for us to do it separately. We don't really get the incentive for somebody. If that would be the incentive there for someone to invent both spots for the most part, we had an event, um, but we did it especially because of the, um, the new arena that's coming. They had an event for their uh, in employees and some of their, their clients, and we gave them. We went out over again the whole space, which is in and out only for people, which was completely way over capacity, but we did it for them for that specific day. Um, we might obviously get them happy. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we may not be happy with that. <laughs> we understand. <laughs> That's okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Trustee Chiara. So, uh, the new proposed refrigerating garbage enclosure seems to be substantially smaller than. Yes, because the way we're building it, and I, and I did it in um, conjunction with, with our uh, service, as far as our uh, calling service, is we're building it, first of all, it also has height, and what we're going to do, gonna do is refrigerate it, and everything in a totally enclosed door is back service. So yes, it was regular, so we're going to, the whole structure is built to be back service, so we're going to have bags in there, and we're going to roll up the, Door. When we go out, we take out the garbage. The garbage will be put from there into the carting services truck and sent on its way. So it'll be actually more than enough space when you do it that way. And how often is that the garbage service? Coming? Five days a week. Five days a week. The heating, I know in, inside the heating, in, inside that area you use propane heaters. Uh, where are you going to be storing? So right now, uh, in conjunction again with the fire marshal, saying what they like, so we put um, a enclosure in the across the street uh, on the in the parking area and in the area on, on the front part of it, and um, they were happy with that. But we had we put a separate enclosure there, but it's locked, and we keep uh, we keep it over there. And so how often do you change those tanks? Do you, do you change them when they go out? So if there are patrons in the, in the facility and the, the heater goes out, what happens? So if the heater goes out and they're there, so we, we just, just hold the tool, just take it out, pull the other one, pull it, we put one in, and um, that's the way we go right now. Does that pose any danger to uh, customers when that happens? I don't, I don't, I don't believe so. I don't, I think, uh, So now, especially with the way we're doing things now with this area outside, there'll be 
a fire exit, a fire door right on the street, but, uh, at the end of it, where you can walk right out, and there's an exit door over there. Um, you turn off from outside. Yeah, so outside there will be, there'll be, there'll be two exits, one where they can actually go right from outside, push an emergency door right onto the street, and, and if they have to, they can go from also a secondary uh, emergency from the inside also. And do you have any other fire emergency equipment in that area, like the fire extinguishers and stuff like that? We everything, um, It's a code requirement that the yeah. fire extinguishers be placed at the exits. And so the, when this application goes back into the building, if it does, the building department for the work to be done to the um, garage bar, um, we would necessarily, as part of that application, have to do the egress analysis, show the egress points, and conform to us as the public running of this fire extinguisher. Right. So, 
something. To yeah, but yeah. I, I can envision. Yeah, that. I can understand what you're saying. Right? It's a football game. Yeah. Yeah. I can understand what you're saying. I don't foresee, like I said, I would say, it's all a conversation, and this is what I'm saying, 95% of the time, there's no, going to be no sound. If there's that moment, you know, what's your kind of championship, same kind of things like that, and somebody wants to push something that we might be do, but I don't think it's going to be anything um, to be concerned about. I don't know if we have to be concerned about. I also don't think we have that going on. The Rangers, of course, I'm sorry, they have no chance. Yes, yes. But like, you know, when it came that night, they wanted to see that.
issues and applications. So the, the history of this, the type of door was computed on my part. And it affected egress from the space. We can't egress from an employee. There is an egress door in the room, a second means of egress, but in the discussions with Ms. Marcus about ADA access to that egress door, we had to make proposed modifications so that you do in fact have two means of egress without going through the accordion door. So yes, the mid application was filed, the structure involved, there were comments back from Ms. Marcus, we've been addressing those comments to her point permit has not been issued. No. And the area that you're working on as far as the service bar, has a permit been issued for the work that's already been done there? No, no. Can you just tell me why you proceeded yeah, done it? I'm sorry. No, that's, that's my fault. So, it's not that it's an answer, but when the zoning happened in February, my thought process was, I, and the gap between February and May, I thought that I, I, I never had the intention of opening anything up. I thought that I would get some legwork done and take, I thought I was taking a chance that it would get denied. I would just have, in other words, invested that money and it would have been denied. Um, but I didn't realize what I was supposed to do. Except it was only recently the wheels started changing to make that area a service <coughs> park. Right. So no. that's, it wasn't as soon as they made their decision. That, the bottom line, that's, again, it's not a good answer, but it was no malice intended, but it, no. they, you know, that, that falls on me. We're out of time. Appreciate it, because we're seeing more and more buildings and, and things being done in the village mm -hmm. without a permit. Right. And then people say, may I approve them, may I approve them. You know, I'm sorry that I did that. Yes. And, and you know, we have a building department that here not, not to just be bad people, they're here to protect the residents and their structures and the public. And that's why I mean, some of us get upset about this. And I, I completely understand, and I think I understand completely what I need to do with anything moving forward. Um, because that, because the time, there was time lapsing anyway, so it wasn't like I didn't do, wanted to do the quote unquote um, on purpose, but as far as, again, I, 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 so I completely understand what you're saying, I completely understand and respect the position that everybody's in, and their concerns, and their concerns for the community, and we definitely want to um, do what's necessary to meet. We appreciate your allocation. Thank you. Trustee Stewart? How long um, <coughs> do you expect or would weather force you to close the patio like you know, February? Well, I think the pandemic has changed everything, without a doubt, especially for restaurant operations. Um, I think it, we do it on based on how people's level of So someone comes to the outside, you know, let them sit outside. Yeah, they want to sit outside, they can sit outside at 40 degrees, although I know many companies want to sit outside in that temperature. But to me, the, what, and the practical sense, the practical sense, what I learned is that you can sit outside at 40 degrees, and you can sit outside at 40 degrees, you know, this, once it hits, you know, 60, it's like 90. So 60 degrees is the new 90 as far as the weather because you feel warm enough that you can sit outside. Um, we definitely see a drop off anyway. Even if I want to open up year round, the customers dictate. And we saw a drop off December, January, February, not good months. So my, my question about that really is though, then where, I mean, it may not even really be any of my concern, but you have like something, just like 11 to 15 of those tanks, like where would we have store to have storage for that, or that just stays outside really long? The, the, the actual, actual heating on The actual heating on stays outside. We don't okay. bring it in and out. And just to circle back to the garbage again, I never really thought I'd have so many questions about garbage. Yeah. But here's the, so the, I really, so I, I'm your bus, bus owner, I throw a bag in there, right? That's how that works. The bag's full, I throw it in there. So how does, how does the carding company get to the bags? Do they, do they manually take them out? So we, like in, in a restaurant itself, we store, we have our usual bags that we use during the course of the night. Mm -hmm. um, and if there's anything that, Overextends our capacity, or whatever, that, that night, 
then we will physically take it out to the way they're supposed to go in the garbage. But the garbage company's going to go in one spot to get the garbage. And that's a we put it where they're going to get it. Right? So, so, how, so I'm, I'm just told, I just can't really see it. So the truck backs up to the, to the garbage, to this you know, structure. So what if so everything is set and done, the truck will actually parallel park. It wouldn't have to because it would be a back system. So they're parallel park. We're going to open up the door, the garbage is stored. So it's manual. It's not, it's not like one of those. No. No, I mean, it's not. Yes. It's that nothing to take it out, put it in the truck, and, and the truck. The car in fact does that? Excuse me? The, car, the yes. guy in the truck does yes. that. Your, your, your people don't do that. The car in the company does that, and if they, we always make ourselves available. If there's any issues ever, if they ever say that, you know, it's a little too much for them or anything to that effect, we have no problem helping them with that. But I would say 95% of
freedom with uh, building things that the building department is not necessarily completely familiar with or, or has the permits for them. We've already you know, mentioned that and explained that we appreciate it. But uh, I just want to reiterate for everybody, um, as I'm sure all my fellow trustees do, that um, in other cases, that very often leads to dangerous situations, including we've had um, a larger than usual number of fires this year, um, some blamed on electrical issues. And we just want to get it out there that that permit process that we have is really, really important in ensuring safety. Um, you might have a great architect and you wouldn't be in that situation, but others, when they see it, tend to say, well, this one did it, that one did it. And we, we have to put a stop through our leaders in our community to that happening because it does impose, in many cases, a danger. Yeah, I completely understand and I respect where you come from. I apologize. Um, and I would like to say, honestly, like moving forward, that we will not take that lightly and will respect uh, what between the building department, the board, and the community in general. So I completely understand. We appreciate that. Thank you. For the record, what is work. Um, when I become aware of these things, as I tell Vincent, I'm not a but this makes no sense to me. I tell him to cease and desist for all the reasons we spoke about. Because obviously it's a lot more difficult for me, number one, to come from behind and try to figure out what you did. Number one, number two, as you say, sometimes you make mistakes. And unless you flesh all this out in the beginning, so I've had this very, let's say, heated discussion. He understands. All right? This is not like that. I ask for a motion to reserve decision and close this. Okay. So moved. Second. Trustee Kambania. Aye. Trustee Chang. Aye. Trustee Chiara. Aye. Trustee Stewart. Aye. And Nathan Chang. Aye. Well, thank you. Thank you for those who came for the public hearings. Uh, now, uh, we will take. I see you still here. There is a general question for me. I know you're going to be bringing your card to this Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Before we move to the agenda, I don't know what
Amen. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. Mr. Stewart. Aye. And Mr. Charles. Aye. I ask the board to authorize the village administrator to sign the unit set agreement for municipal finance advising services as proposed in said agreement. I will for that resolution. Second. Any discussion? This will be pulled up. Trustee Carmine. Aye. Trustee Chang. Aye. Trustee Chair. Aye. Trustee Stewart. Aye. And Mr. Charles. Aye. I would ask the board to approve change order number one for additional engineering services of LKB Consulting Engineers for the road reconstruction of Floral Boulevard in the amount of $27,000. All in favor of the motion. I will second it. Any discussion? Trustee Carmine. Aye. Trustee Chang. Aye. Trustee Chair. Aye. Trustee Stewart. Aye. And Mayor Fitzgerald. Aye. I would ask the board to authorize an extension of time for a special use permit issued to Floral Park Depository 1929 Realty Partners LLC for property 99 Covered Avenue up to and including October 19, 2021. I'll vote for that resolution. Second. Any discussion? I vote for the appropriate fees too. Yes. Hold on. Trustee Pavanya? Aye. Trustee Chang? Aye. Trustee Chair? Aye. Trustee Stewart? Aye. And I would ask the board to surplus and auction of the presented public works vehicles and equipment. I'll ask you a Second. Any discussion other than one of those from 1980? Yeah. All those? Trustee Chang. Aye. Trustee Chair. Aye. Trustee Stewart. Aye. And Trustee Fitzgerald. Aye. I would ask the board to appoint all of Brady as assistant pool director for the 2021 pool season and a contractual amount of, of $11,822 and to promote Andrew S. S. B. as part time assistant pool director at the hourly rate of $16.75. Who will offer that resolution? Second. Any discussion? Ms. Walsh, you call the board. Trustee Mahania. Aye. Trustee Chang. Aye. Trustee Chair. Aye. Trustee Stewart. Aye. And Amy Fitzgerald. Aye. I would ask the board to approve the determinations of the special use permits as presented. We're not approving the permit. We're doing the CBER. The CBER. The special use, yes, I should have been more clear. That's right. I, I, will, will, I will offer that. Thank you. I'll second it. Any other discussion? Ms. Walsh, would you call the board? Trustee Kambanya. Aye. Trustee Chang. Aye. Trustee Chair. Aye. Trustee Stewart. Aye. I would ask the board to introduce proposed local law number one of 2021, can, can I, I'm sorry, cannabis law section 131 to opt out of licensing and establishing retail cannabis dispensaries and or on-site cannabis consumption establishments in the village of Coral Park. I'll vote that resolution. I second. Any discussion? This will be called the Trustee Pambania. Aye. Trustee Chang. Aye. Trustee Chair. Aye. Trustee Stewart. Aye. And Mayor Fitzgerald. Aye. I would ask the board to determine that proposed local law number one of 2021 that pursuant to Canada's law section 131 to opt out of licensing and establishing retail cannabis dispensaries and or on-site consumption establishments is a type two action as defined in secret and will not have a significant effect on the environment. I'll offer the resolution. Second. Any discussion? Other than this is the start of the process and there will be a public hearing in the near future on this topic. Ms. Walsh, hold on. Trustee Pavania. Aye. Trustee Chang. Aye. Trustee Chair. Aye. Trustee Stewart. Aye. And Mayor Fitzgerald. Aye. I would ask the board to approve Triple A taxi cab license for James Catan since receiving background clearance from the uh, Fourth Park Police Department. I'll offer that resolution. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Against? Motion to carry. I would ask the board to approve the request of the Pearl Park American Leisure Post 334 to hold an open time ceremony on Friday, June 4th at 7 p.m. at the Recreation Center parking lot with the assistance of the Pearl Park Fire and Public Works Departments. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion to carry. I would ask the board to authorize the mayor to sign an agreement with St. Henry's Church in town of Hempstead, where the village will issue payment to St. Henry's Church in the amount of $3,436 in quarterly payments for use of parish hall for citizen, senior citizen activities covering the period from January 1st, 2021.
21 and December 31st, 2021. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Trustee Bambano, Adam, Trustee Chang, Trustee Gio, Trustee Stewart, Aye. and Mayor Fitzgerald. Aye. Finally, I would ask the board to approve the request of Trinity Restaurant to hold their 26th anniversary on Saturday, June 5th, 2021, subject to the Department of Health and CDC guidelines and the receipt of certificate of insurance. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Thank you, Thank you, Ms. Walsh. Now we will move on to uh, board reports. Deputy Mayor.
elevators at the Long Island Railroad Station are being turned over to the MTA on June 7th. After their initial testing, an electrical box had to be changed, and presumably that is the reason for the delay. Once turned over, it is now up to the MTA to decide when to open the elevators to the public. Charles Street sound wall work will begin next week. Poles will be installed, and installation of those poles should be completed by the end of May. It will be a one-month break, and actual wall installation will start in July, and that should take three to four weeks. The work near Tunnel Street will be continuing, continuing with the installation of retaining walls and switch work for the next four to six months. Most of the machinery and equipment for this work will come in from the new Hyde Park side of the summer. Finally, we will be planning a landscaping meeting in the next two weeks to decide what we might want installed at the end of the dead end streets that can dissect with the right of way. We also will be speaking to residents that abut the retaining walls to see if they have any interest in landscaping on their property. Um, this was promised to us by the MTA um, in their memorandum of understanding and agreement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks for all your work doing. What you're doing with the uh, PTC, and I know the residents of West Street appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, I'm pleased to call in a village boy in an Afghan community. I would like to extend our sincere condolences and offer our prayers to the family of Detective Antal and Antonesio to Santos, a 14 year NYPD Ivory Patrol veteran who tragically lost his life in the line of duty. Sadly, his funeral was held today. May he rest in peace and may we continue to keep his family in our thoughts and prayers. God bless the Police Department. I'd like to thank our Floor Park Police Department, who together with the Floor Park crew members and members of the Lions Club, collected 197 pounds of unwanted medications, narcotics, and syringes at the National Drug Take Back Day, sponsored by the Drug Enforcement Agency. Crew and Lion members assisted residents by helping place these items in containers that were later picked up by the DEA to be safely destroyed. They also distributed helpful information on wellness and resources. The residents who dropped off these items thank the organizers for allowing them to dispose of these items properly. It was a very successful, successful event. The police department once again reminds all residents to lock your cars and homes to avoid any unwanted events. Recently, there were reports of individuals entering unlocked cars and moving property from these vehicles. Our police department are on alert and adjusting their patrols accordingly. Please help out by locking your cars and immediately reporting any of these incidents. For all the building department, they continue their efforts to receive and turn around permits as quickly as possible. They are doing a great job assisting all our residents. The Floral Boulevard Reconstruction Project is in full construction mode. Concrete work along with the installation of catch basins are currently being worked on. Once completed, the next phase will be the rebuilding and paving of the entire road. This will be the last phase of construction and probably the most destructive to our residents who live on the boulevard. They will have, they will have to be street closures and detours until the paving is complete. The construction company in the village will keep all the residents informed of the upcoming construction and, and their schedules. Our emergency service providers and our schools will be also be notified so that adjustments can be made. Please drive safely in this construction zone and report any issues that need to be addressed on this construction project to our building department. We are having weekly construction meetings to address any of these issues. Thank you to all of our residents for the patience they have exhibited during this major construction project. For crew, on uh, April 27th of this year, of last month, the crew held an evening of reflection, a message of hope, posted by Our Lady of Victory. The guest speaker, Lieutenant John Green of the Fire FDNY, shared with all of us who attended his first-hand experience on September 11th and his road to recovery. He is a remarkable, fortunate, and appreciative man who sees it as his mission to keep the events of 9-11 alive by telling his story and letting all hear that is always hope for a better tomorrow. Thank you, Lieutenant Green, for sharing your experience with, with us. Thanks to the crew, in particular, Elaine Lucari, for organizing, and Joe O'Grady for emceeing the event. 
Thank you, Father Tom, and in all of thee for hosting the event in the chapel. It was definitely an evening of reflection with a, a positive message of hope. Thank you. Thank you, Justice. Thanks uh, to yourself and uh, Deputy Mayor for combining all the work you've been doing for uh, getting off the ground and just some excellent moving forward. Hot, hot to Trustee Stewart. Thank you, Mayor. So at the library, uh, they have these, uh, they call them story walks, but they take pictures of children's books and place them outside on these stakes and the kids walk around and um, a parent or guardian or one of our librarians will tell the story as they walk around. It's been incredibly successful with our younger children. Um, it's been a terrific way to get kids at the library and spend some time outside during this crazy time. So, uh, the library also had a successful May the 4th Be With You event on th this past Sunday with characters from Star Wars in full costume, there were lots of pictures, lots of laughing, lots of fun. I encourage residents to check out the library's website and Facebook page for information about the myriad of upcoming programs for residents of all ages, including uh, Team Yoga, which will be outside at Beacons, I believe, uh, next week. So for the pool, we're happy to approve two season directors. Uh, for the pool, for the summer of 2021, uh, they're both lifelong residents with impressive resumes, and they will certainly make a positive impact on our summer 2021 programs. We remain on track to open June 13th. We are looking forward to introducing as many programs as health department guidelines will allow. And I know you're standing on top of the guidelines. Just a couple quick comments. Uh, Debbie May Pavanio mentioned about the tree planting, and I would just like to echo uh, thanks to uh, Superintendent Dean and uh, his team for going out and picking out the trees this year. Uh, doing this for a couple of years, I noticed this year they were especially different, better, and I appreciate the effort for them to do that. And uh, once again, uh, I guess unfortunately we have to thank the, uh, the fire department for all their hard work. Um, it's been a rough year, um, but it's an amazing job that they do day in and day out, especially when the alarm rings with a serious call like we had the other day. Uh, they're there plus our neighboring town, so thank you uh, to them for coming to our assistance. Uh, it's an amazing job. And sitting in uh, this chair for us for 10 years, it never ceases to amaze me the dedication of those individuals that they have. And uh, with that, uh, I'd like to close this portion of the meeting before we move to public comments. Scouts, uh, certainly I put it in my letter to the 12 o'clock fire department. 
control the work they've done with their band. Um, and uh, the, uh, the other thing I'm being asked <laughs> is uh, basically uh, uh, we wanted to simply have a traditional parade instead of the caravan and follow up. Um, I'm open to yours and, and the board's review and approval to begin the level of effort to put together the march down to it. It's not identical, but it is very close to the level of effort to put together the parade, meaning that the contacts would have to be put out. Um, I don't know, the route would be the same route used previously. Mm -hmm. um, it would take the burden off having the expense of the caravan. And um, the only thing I can think of, and I'm not aware of it within the Board of Bank, but a special permission would have to be requested and granted to have the Floral Park Memorial and the uh, John Lewis Childs bands march if uh, we had a traditional parade. And so, if you don't mind, we can think about it and uh, we'll come back to it shortly. Obviously, time is of the essence to coordinate something like that. With okay. with, your, with, your permission, with your permission, what I, what I like to do then is just hold, I held off intentionally on the advertising 